with the right conditions, we usually have the perfect half shoal. They're the right size and they have real good flavor to them. And so most of our oysters are harvested for half shell stock. This is the most productive estuary in the Northern Hemisphere. Acre for acre and pound for pound, we produce more seafood here when everything is right than any other place in North America. When everything is right. Four years ago, one of America's great estuaries was crippled by months of record low flows on the Apalachicola River. I'm heading out into the bay with WFSUFM's Jim Ash to get a sense of how the oyster and shrimp industries are recovering. Well, legal oyster, we've been catching two, three, four bags a day. This is some of that stuff we shell planted last year, right, right before the, it really, it's really put a growing on. Apalachicola Bay used to provide 90% of Florida's oyster harvest and 10% of the nation's. But since 2012, the bottom of the bay looks a lot like this. Oysters need hard surfaces on which to grow, such as other oyster shells. That's why a major part of the recovery is a shelling program. All this was shelled about nine months ago, and you're finding some legal oysters in it. These oysters here are most likely about five, six months old. Apalachical oysters have been known to reach market size in as little as 18 months. That's good, isn't it? Mm. The conditions now, the oysters look really good. They're coming back, they're healthy. Uh, it's just taken a long time for them to recover, longer than we've ever seen. The two to three bags Eugene is harvesting are just under the current four bag limit. When the bay was healthier, the limit was 20 bags. With their earning potential diminished, oystermen are turning to other jobs. It's a big issue for the people here. We don't have manufacturing jobs here. Uh, we have a height limit. You cannot build above 35 feet high. We don't have 10-story condominiums. We don't have Walmarts. We don't have movie theaters. We don't have shopping malls. I know families, whole families have had to pick up and leave. Uh, a lot of them try to go and be gone two, three months at a time and come home to their family. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's changed a lot. We don't have the money here in Franklin County that they have in, in Metro Atlanta, no, and we never will. It's not about that, it's, it's about protecting the environment, protecting the way of life, protecting the heritage and the history of our, our community and our county and the people that live here. The Army Corps of Engineers water manual for the ACF Basin gives priority to the state of Georgia. During an extreme drought in 2012, the Corps restricted river flow to 5,000 cubic feet per second, close to the minimum allowed. This lasted 10 months, the driest recorded period on the Apalachicola River. Productivity is directly tied to freshwater input. The landings correlate with low water flows. When you have low water flows here, the landings go down. As you can see in the graph, the shorter life cycle of shrimp makes them more immediately vulnerable to changes in freshwater input than oysters. After a few wet years, we're likely not far from another cyclical dry period. The latest version of the ACF water manual still gives priority to Georgia, and an upcoming lawsuit between Florida and Georgia is unlikely to settle the issue soon. If we go through another low flow drought year, and what the Corps is presenting to us, we're over with. We're not recovering from that. We're at the tipping point, and until we can change the way the management provides for those drought periods where we're not experiencing the low water levels in the floodplain and the high salinities in the marsh and the nursery area for such long periods of time, that trend is gonna continue. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.